So we just been joined by Jeremiah Milton, uh, heavyweight out of Tulsa, 4-0, four, no, four KOs, and uh, you're doing the victory lap. Thank you. Good morning. How are you, champ? Oh uh, man, good, 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 man. So, so do I got to remind you, or you remember me exactly after I ran up on you in the mall? Hey, yo. <laughs> Turn his mic on, uh, Keenan. Uh, talking to it. We live, we live, we I don't hear him. I, nah. hear, I don't hear him. Well, one moment as we. Uh, uh, you there you go. go. Oh, yeah, there, we go. there he uh, goes. Yeah, there there go. he there goes. Go. Now, nah, yeah, uh, you know what? Uh, still been, still been pacing since you ran up on me. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> still been trying to get it done. You know. But. Nah, you've gotten it done since then. I'm pretty sure things have changed, man. Yeah. It looked like it on the outside looking in for sure. Oh, that's right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Like, the main thing is I just got to keep moving the way I'm moving, you know what I'm saying, uh, and keep throwing myself out there, you know, jumping at different opportunities and whatnot. Well, speaking of opportunities, you have gotten a few since we've seen each other. Obviously, Danny Alvarez, no relation to Canelo Alvarez, but you were in that camp, and he was bringing that up to the audience uh, earlier. Give us a little bit, uh, some stories on that, man. How was your time with Canelo Alvarez and, and working with Frank Sanchez and just, just being amongst all those champions? Yo, family. You know what I'm saying? One thing I said about his family, you know, um, uh, Latin culture, you know what I'm saying? They they really embrace people, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, like, I don't fully speak the language when I go all down there, but, you know, they're getting better English, too. Uh, but, like, uh, one thing about it is, like, you know, it's just private gym, you know what I'm saying? Everybody is there to help each other. You know, Eddie is a really good guy, you know what I'm saying? The whole team is just, like, family-orientated. That's what's up, man. And how'd that situation come about? Obviously, they had you uh, sparring Frank Sanchez, but um, how'd you end up with that assignment? Yo, look, man, I'm telling you, like, one thing about it is you just got to keep putting in the work, man, and, and it'll get noticed, you know, like, uh, the boxing community, you know what I'm saying, uh, the, the fighter fan base, you know what I'm saying, has really took a, a liking to me out here in Vegas. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm sparring with uh, my boy Johnny Rice, you know what I'm saying, he get the phone call to come uh, spar with uh, Charles Martin. You know, he can't do it, he got work op op obligations, and, you know, he's like, hey, I got a guy for you, though. And so he told me, do I want to go? I said, yeah, I'll go down now. Nice. I spar with Charles, you know what I'm saying? Charles is like, wow, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you you really got something, dude. And then Manny's telling me that. Uh, and then they Manny managed. Robles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His Manny trainer. Took a, Manny took a real liking to me, and, and Manny's a great, great coach. Learned a lot down there. Uh, so then he, uh, you know, then um, Charles's people, his their manager, whatever, tells Frank and them about me. And then, you know, next thing you know, uh, I'm getting a call to go out that way. And then they like, wow, you know, we you give Frank some of the best work, so... You, you got to keep coming back, you know what I'm saying? But my mentality ain't ain't a sparring partner. It's just, you know, like I want to be around the best. So, For sure. So I'm working. Soaking like it in. Soaking it in. Yeah. And learning. You got now, some you got some rounds in with Canelo as well, did, didn't I you? I was supposed to. Oh, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. So okay. Like, and it was dead. It, they was dead serious about making it happen, man. It was uh, right before the Caleb uh, fight, you know what I'm saying? Like Eddie come over to me and, and Canelo was eyeing me. Eddie Renoso. Yeah, okay. yeah. Eddie, Eddie came over to me and Canelo was eyeing me. And uh, he was like, hey, uh. You you come back Saturday and spar with Canelo? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do that. I do that. Yo, I love it, man, because people call me crazy. I think he could beat Rivas. Before before Eddie Reynoso talked about Makabu, mm -hmm. I was telling my audience he could beat Rivas. I seen Rivas last fight with Ryan Rosecki. Canelo beats Rivas right now. And for the yeah. case, and he sparring with Frank Sanchez. And Did you get him to see him? You I, seen him in person or no? Well, uh, sparring with Frank. No, I didn't see him sparring uh, with Frank. Frank was getting ready for his FA fight. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, like, uh, he was dialed in on himself. Uh, but, you know, I did watch Canelo train. You know what I'm saying? I seen it, like, close to person. You can watch YouTube videos. You can yeah. be like, oh, yeah, he won 60. Nah, the dude is, dude is cracking. <laughs> and he's an accurate puncher. You yes. Know what I'm he's a very accurate puncher. Yeah. I mean, well, you got to give him that. You know, obviously you were down there sparring with Frank, but what is something that you could say just from watching Canelo in the gym that you were able to take away? Um, You know, repetition, shot placement, and then, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, think about it is like they come into the gym, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, and it's just the, the mindset that's in that gym, you know what I'm saying? Like, they ain't um, in there like, uh, you know what I'm saying? They they having a good time, but like it's just like boom, we gonna get the work in, then we gonna get out. You know what I'm saying? So like uh, that that champion mindset. I think he he's been like the hardest worker I've seen, the hardest worker I've seen. But I mean, it's with a purpose too. It ain't just like I'm just grind myself to death. It's like you know this is the blueprint, 
And they got a system. Look at the wins in the gym. You know what I'm saying? Like what they win eleven times in the last the straight eleven last belts. Mm. All the fighters in there. So mm. it's the system. It's the Definitely. system. Definitely. Yeah. Would you would you make uh you know I was we we spoke about the uh FA and Frank Sanchez fight and I feel that you know the majority of the people you know the consensus of the public was that FA hits too hard you know Frank ain't got the pop to to hurt him to keep him off of him um what what is what you saw in the gym is that well reflected in the fight yeah, uh, you know, uh, absolutely. I, I say like this, um, Frank. We we uh, we know that uh, Fa was gonna have the advantage in the power. You know, Frank knew that. Frank called it out. You know what I'm saying? But one thing about it is, uh, Frank can really box. He can really move. Um, and that's one thing I've been saying. You know, uh, about Fa is like, you know, he has his one trick. You know what I'm saying? It's a decent trick. You know what I'm saying? But like when you match that up against boxing, this is still the sport of boxing. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So like I can't get too happy about, you know, the power that I got. I got to still develop my craft. You know what I'm saying? Because I got some good power myself. But, you know, it, when it comes to boxing, you know what I'm saying? Somebody putting these things on, you can't touch them. You know, then, then what you going to do? So, uh, yeah, I think uh, in, in the last camp, I was out there with Frank uh, right before he fought his Christian Hammer fight. He actually got, he actually got stronger. Um, so, I mean, I think it's just, you know, it take a while, you know what I'm saying, to like get locked into what Eddie and them is doing, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, that, but they on a solid growth trajectory, it looked like mm -hmm. to me. Um, being in there, did you like reflect on anything? Like, man, I need to be working a little harder. Or, or, or did you look at how, the way they were working and say, damn, I'm right on par with these guys. Like, I've been doing what I need to do. Uh, you know what, like, it, it was about half and half, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, uh, you know, the biggest thing about me is always going to be my heart, you know what I'm saying, and my and my um, work ethic, mm. you know what I'm saying? But, like, uh, one thing I noticed is when I got in there, I, I can work more effectively, you know what I'm saying? So, like, it, like I say, I don't want to keep throwing that term out there harder because people will think they'll take that the wrong way and be like, uh, you know, let me go put in some extra, you know, and they burn themselves out. But you can work more effectively, you know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah, that's the biggest takeaway is, like, um, being in some of these camps. You know, uh, whenever I seen Fury and Wilder fight, because I was at that fight, you know, not to detract, um, that fight set the tone with the energy, though. So, I, that, that you know, the way they came out and tried to fight each other for the heavyweight division, um, I think, you know, that inspired me to come out and not, you know, play no games with boys. I'm trying to jump on them. So, how much you think your level has increased – your, you know, your, your skill, because now you've gone around to different gyms, you soaked in different things from different trainers. Sure. Um, do you feel, have you felt that, I guess, uh, uptick in your skill in this last fight? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, um, you know, one thing about it is you just got to wait and, and keep seeing me. You know what I'm saying? You just got to wait and see it develop. Um, you know, my last fight, you know, it was a last minute replacement in Del Long. Um, but you know, the the worst thing that could have happened in that fight was if I'd have let this man go any farther, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Um, or if he'd have made it out of the second out of the first round. Uh, you know, people was messaging me like, Oh yeah, he's gonna slow down, he's gonna I wouldn't worry about none of that. You know what I'm saying? Like I was still giving him respect and I approached it with, with with that mentality, but you know, I showcased what I needed to showcase, um, and you know, did what I did and showing like, you know, there's just levels to the game. And when you're sticking around the best in the game, you know, your level go up. Now, obviously, uh, you, you've gotten the win, but this is your second top-ranked show. Have they expressed interest in a possible signing? Because I know it's been strategic, too. Both times you've been on, both fights have been in Tulsa. You're obviously from Tulsa. So, you know, they're using you for your name and, 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 and draw power in your home state, but... Have they started to take a liking and see the potential in you yet? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if you guys are aware, but, like, uh, you know, I, I signed a promotional deal with Tony Holden. Okay. So, Tony Holden is out of Tulsa, um, and that's my promoter right now, and he works real closely with Top Rank. All right. Um, so, you know, I'm with Tony Holden, um, and I'm I'm happy about the deal. Him and his son, Bryce, you know, they do a lot of different things. Uh, they did the Jake Paul card. You know, mm -hmm. they, they helped in whatever capacity that was. Um 
you know, and then they got connections with Showbox and mainly Top Rank. You know, Tony's been in the game, you know, since like a minute, you know, talking about Iron Barkley throwback. Um, so, uh, you know, he has good relations with Bob um, and ESPN. So uh, that's giving me another opportunity to get on these cards now um, and to get my get my fights up. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I, I think they got a good plan for me. Whatever, you know, Top Rank likes me too. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what happens in the future. You know what I'm saying? Like if, if there's that, uh, you know, necessarily partnership or however they do that on the boxing biz. But, uh, you know, all the guys at Top Rank, they all been buzzing about me. Um, you know, so like, you know, they, they push me like, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm one of their own. You know, speaking of Top Rank, uh, it was the first time you were on their card in Tulsa. You had that uh, that that knockout moment where he was like knocked out on the road, standing ropes. up. Yeah. Um, and we saw that. Let goal. me get a screen share, Keenan. That went viral everywhere. It's Keen, Keenan, I'm calling like like Keen Ivory ways, but you said Keenan, Key in, Key in, like uh, put the key in the door. <laughs> Yeah, key, key in, in the door, yeah. key in the door. Key in us. But here's the the, the highlight uh, on your Instagram for those people that aren't following. It's obviously uh, dreamland underscore Milton. But this is the, the knockout that we're speaking of. I mean, take us through this moment, man. You know, uh, there we go again. You see it like right there. You know, I'm, I'm just patient. Uh, and uh, the main thing about this um, was the fact that I didn't hit him again. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's what a lot of people really respected about the KO. Um, but, you know, I, I actually credit this um this one right here to Ortiz to a certain extent. Ortiz and Canelo, they kind of have, you know, a way that they set up their feints. Um, and, uh, you know, I was able to freeze them and I never seen nothing like it myself, you know, and I was able to realize the situation. Uh, and when I seen the situation, you know, I'm, I'm just like, hey, this man, you know, he, he done. It's the first round. So you seen in my second fight on top rank, uh, when I dropped Dell, I was patient. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I didn't Can you go to that nest? Yeah. I, I was real patient on the, on the second fight. Uh, and it's because, you know, I know I'm fighting a full round. That was a full round fight too. Um, these guys, you know what I'm saying, I want to I get them out of there in a spectacular fashion if I'm going to take them out. So, uh, yeah, just being more patient with my setup and being aware I, I'm in control of the game. I got to ask, um, you know, the sport obviously is protect yourself at all times. You brought up not hitting him again. Why didn't you? Because I know a lot of people like, oh, you know, if he would have, it's you know, it would have been clean. You know, the ref hadn't intervened. At Floyd that. did it. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah. ref hadn't intervened up to that point. Um, what was going through your mind? Like, obviously, you saw you had him hurt on the ropes. What what went through your mind? You know, I think it's just, uh, you know, my level of awareness. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just different. I mean, I can only be myself in that ring. Um, you know, and when I'm in that ring, you know what I'm saying, I, I got very bad intentions, you know what I'm saying? But like the goal is, you know what I'm saying, to stop, you know, whatever's whatever's coming at me, you know what I'm saying? Whatever's trying to hurt me. That's how I that's how I assist, you know, my opponent is trying to hurt me, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to hurt him. That is what it is. Uh, you know, but it, do it go any further than that? Do I necessarily wanna catch a body? Never, never, you know what I'm saying? I don't you never hear me ever talk like that. Uh, and this was one of those moments to where, you know, I analyzed the situation. Something did not look right. It almost like he was having a seizure in front of me. You know, it is what it is. I was in my rights to hit him again. You seen um the homie Shoo Shoo, you seen his fight last week. Yeah. Yo, he punishes this boy on the ropes. And I mean, you know, dog mentality, you know what I'm saying? That that nothing's wrong with it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Nothing's wrong with it. It's boxing. You know, I had a lot of people tell me, Oh, I should have hit him again. You know, what if mm -hmm. he comes back? What if he does this? You know, this wasn't no championship fight, you know what I'm saying? Like um, this dude ain't nothing like he. None of these guys, you know what I'm saying. In my opinion, even if I'd have fought the uh, Jason Bergman, you know, I, I'd have got him out of there in spectacular fashion. You know, I, I'm just, I'm just at that level to where I, I can do what I want to do with, in the beginning. Do you think that that your uh, counterparts may now question your killer instinct? Nah, well, you know that'd be good. Whatever, whatever they want to <laughs> think, whatever they want to think. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really just don't care. You know what I'm saying? Because. Uh, I can box, you know, I can crack, obviously. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get my respect in there. You just got to get in there and find out. Kian, let me get another screenshot here. This is your last performance. Uh, and, and I'm starting to pick up that purple's your favorite color. We'll get into it, though. <laughs> but uh, here's the, 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 the latest knockout. Boom. And uh, right temple shot, right? Right on, right on the top of the head, kind of. Yeah, shot placement. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I think it's, it's very important where you where you place your shots, you know. My team wanted to see me let my hands go, so, you know, I started thudding them a little bit, you know what I'm yeah. saying, as the rounds, uh, as the round kind of carried right, on. All right, Ken. But, uh, you, know, uh, you know, shot placement is one thing that I see, like, the, the better knockout artists do, such as, like, Canelo and mm -hmm. Ortiz and stuff like that. They just know where to put their punches. So, um... Things have changed a lot, man. Uh, now you're signed to a promoter. You, you've had a couple of television fights. Mm. But I think the, the 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 biggest thing I'm excited about is that you're working with Coach Larry Wade. How long has that been happening? No, nah, that, that's... That's been something from the jump. We from just, the beginning? Yeah, we just been, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that. You know, I've always been underneath the, since my professional career started, the Larry Wade banner. Okay. Uh, but, you know what I'm saying, like, uh, he has uh, his assistants as well, and they and they do they, they due diligence, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So I've more closely worked with uh, people following his his plan, you know. And uh, we haven't got the even, we haven't even got the hit off full potential yet because, uh you know, he's he's still like uh, at the time he was still with Track and his other you know fighters. You know what I'm saying? You have Caleb, you got Sean, you got Badu. Badu Jack. Yeah. He had a lot, but it, yeah. things have changed. I, yeah, yeah. I hear Badu it, moving up or something like that. Yeah, I think he's at cruiserweight now. Yo, I mean, you know, Badu can do it. I don't, I don't really know what's going on with the man, you know, so I can't speak on it. But uh, but you know, Badu, you know, he he congratulated me for last fight as well. But yeah. I'm with uh, all the guys, you know what I'm saying, that that done something in the sport, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And, uh, yeah, so Coach Wade, uh, we've only had opportunities to do camps. We haven't had opportunities to, like, really, like, build the foundation outside of camps. And that's something we're about to start back, you know, next week. We're going to start actually, like, you know, building, you know, because most of the time you get me, it's like, all right, let's get them in shape, you know what I'm saying? But, like, we talked about it, you know, after this fight and everything like that, because there's so much more we can actually do. So you'll see me on the scene with him a lot more. That's what's up. I, I, I definitely like that you're with him, man. He does a great job, did a fantastic job with uh, Badu Jack. You, I, I rarely seen him tired, and he was always able to dig deep. Porter, yes, of yes, course. always Porter. able to dig deep. One of my favorite you guys know, to watch. Plant. Yeah. I, I, I thought, man, I fucking, I really didn't think he was going to get knocked out by Canelo. I thought he his legs, the whole the same thing yeah. like you being with Larry for all these years. I thought the stamina would be there, but yeah. I guess it's different, man. You know when when you got someone like that in front of you, yeah. it might not matter all the miles you run. It's it's a mental thing, right? It got to be that too. You know what I'm saying? I mean, not not taking away anything from uh, Caleb's mental. You know, it's just you going in there with the the tallest task. You know, mm -hmm. we talking about Canelo fighting the heavyweight right now. Mm -hmm. That's what we led with. You know what I'm saying? So the man do have something. You know, he got something in him. Uh, and watching them that close. And, you know, uh, I like I like, I like, like some of the things they do in their camp, man. You know, of course, that's that's the world champ. Uh, and they all they all do the same routine pretty much. You know, I don't see anybody. What I seen Frank doing was the same thing I seen Canelo doing. And, and like I said, that's, that's what I'm seeing. I'm like, oh, Frank got a little bit more power this time. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, they doing something right over there. What um was there any surprise to you, right? Because at this point, uh you had already been around Canelo and been in camp with them. When they announced the 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 cruiserweight thing and you know, to be mandatory for Junior McAboo or to be ranked number one, I should say, um, was there any surprise? Like, wow, like he's gonna go up, yeah. you know, for a fifth division. Yeah, no, I, I ain't gonna lie. I was I was surprised, but then it made sense. I was like, that's why they wanted to spar me. You know what I'm saying? Like, and uh, you know, it's interesting because uh, I had nothing um, when they asked that question. Like, you know, I'm not no Caleb Plant. I'm a heavyweight. You know what I'm saying? I'm a completely different fighter. Um, so you know, he's getting ready for uh, Caleb, and uh, you know, they talking about sparring me. So it was like it was odd, but it was just like, yo, this just like. At first, I thought he was just doing it, you know what I'm saying, to like, because he enjoy it. But then I'm like, okay, there was a plan, you know what I'm saying, for like why they wanted to see that, because they was already discussing probably. Uh, and so, yeah, if he he does take that, you'll probably see me out there sparring with Canelo. You know? Crazy. I, I wonder if they wanted to get a gauge, or is that an indication that they've made the decision to fight Macabre? See, and before you got here, I told him, I'm like, I'm pretty sure, because I saw footage of him sparring 
a heavyweight, and it wasn't Frank Sanchez. I'm like, I thought it, I thought it was you. I thought it was you. The Ellis boy. Um, yeah, Ronald? But, Ronald. Yeah, but, he, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but he, he's they, like 68. Yeah. Those was thinking that was me because we had the dreads. They, uh, I got messages talking about, yo, you Swan Canelo? I said, Whoa. you know what? And that I, wasn't I, me. It could have been. It, <laughs> he nah, kind of looked he, big in the video. He had a white head girl or something. He kind of looked big in the video, but I don't know. Like, you know, his videos, Canelo's videos, they go viral no matter what. Uh, whoever he's sparring. And they was like, yo, was that you? I said, what? I laughed about it because I said, yo, that ain't me, dog. <laughs> So uh, we we have Jonathan Rice scheduled to come in next around seven thirty. Oh, no uh, so you might bump into him out there. But um, I see, you know, that he's congratulating you on all your wins right here on your Instagram and stuff like that. Who's just that? Jonathan Rice? Oh, okay, Jonathan so, Rice. So just uh, what is what you know? How what's your relationships or the or the basis of your guys' relationship and and how'd you meet him and yeah? Oh yeah, you you could have brought him in here with me, man. That's my dog, man. Um. Yeah, Johnny, man, uh, we uh, we met over at Bones Gym, you know what I'm saying? He working with Coach Rodney, Coach Bones, uh, and I was over there at the time. And, uh, yeah, you know, it was one of those things when we first met each other. We just heavyweights. We getting our work in and stuff like that. But, like, uh, you know, we, we've been in the trenches together, man. We, we sparred Tyson Fury together. You know, uh, he was coming off of work, working all night, getting over there, uh, getting off, like, 5, 6 o'clock in the morning to come spar at 9. So, like, uh, for him, man, he been on this exponential like rebirth, and uh, yeah, I can't be more happy for my dog, man. Like just seeing him, like you know, have that confidence now to come in here and do what he's doing to these guys uh, with his upset with Michael Coffey in the rematch, and I'm sure he gonna be on it again because he just he taking his craft that much more serious. Yeah, we were just talking about that. You know, he was coming off that FA loss into that fight with uh, Michael Polite Coffee. I mean, let's be real. Jonathan Rice had uh, journeyman like stigma. This These two wins, he's got a deal. From what I understand, he's signed to PBC now. I mean, I've been following him for a while. He's physically changing his body. Is he with Coach Larry Wade now too? You know, I don't know the details on um, what, what they got going on, but I did tell him, I said, yo, you know, Reach out to him because he was he really liked what they did in my camp. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we got a lot of mutual friends, and so he seen like how how was transforming going into this fight. Uh, he looked like he transformed. It, he's coming his down. chest yeah, he's, looking yeah. like visibly yeah. in better shape. No, nah, you know what? But I mean, like uh, you see, after he uh, fought the second time, he said, "Yo, I'm, I'm gonna you know I'm gonna stop working so hard. I'm gonna just get in the gym." So mm -hmm. now, if you got the money, you know what I'm saying to. Take care of yourself. Like, boxing is so mental. But he still got a day-to-day because -day yeah. he told me he's getting off at yeah. 7 to be here at 7.30. So yeah, he's yeah. like you with the with the third shifts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he he's uh, he he's about to be out of that job, though. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But, like, he's he's starting to really dial into what he got going on boxing-wise, and he see the opportunity in front of him. Uh, so I think he's just going he gonna to see the door. He's going to walk through it, you know. Um but uh, yeah, it's it's been good. It's been good working with Johnny. It's been great, you know. what I'm saying having him as you know somebody that's been in the game that I can hit up on some, Absolutely. some advice. Absolutely, and course. that's what you need. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? That's of what you course. need. I'm, I'm around all these dudes that had their own experience, put their own years in. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't necessarily got to make all the same mistakes. For you know sure, I mean? for sure. Did you expect both of those wins? Uh, no doubt, no doubt. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because I was looking. Yo, at you know Mike Polite's my guy. I'm sorry, bro. bro. O and O. I met him at O yeah. and O as a Wilder spawn partner, and then just ever since I, bro, he has. A, I did. Well, I wasn't expecting that. Bro, he has a great story. You know what I'm saying? Great story, man. Shout out to dude, man. But uh, in the sport of boxing, man, uh, I was actually in L.A. sparring with Charles when he fought uh, Rock. And he was on my radar then. I, I want I want to catch up on these fights. So, uh, you know, I'm around all these great fighters. So, wait, so you resume. you had Polite Coffee uh, yeah, on your radar? Yeah, he was on my radar, man. That's you know crazy. Man? He was on my radar. He's like, he at, at the time when he was undefeated, he was hunting Jared Anderson. He's like, yeah, I, I want the Anderson fight now. I'll fight Dillian White. I want... You know Gerald Wa Gerald Washington, and and then all along he doesn't even know you're looking at him like food. I ain't make it there yet. You know what I'm saying Johnny got to it first, so uh, you know it is what it is. Hey, <laughs> uh, you know, but uh, yeah, you can't cap in this sport, man. So you ain't gonna hear me really just, you know what I'm saying, like 
uh, do anything like that. I got a lot of growth and I got a lot of things that I need to get done, but you see who I'm hanging with. So don't be super shocked when I'm getting in there and doing what I'm doing. Um, because I got the res I you know, I've been embraced, man. I've been embraced by these fighters, man. I'm not just in here spawn with them. You know, Fury follows me, you know what I'm saying? He watches my story. I've been embraced by these by these guys. Somebody that ain't embracing you and he wants you on the menu is uh Deontay Savage. Damn. He don't want that. He don't want that. I don't that. know. I he seen y'all with a little back and forth, uh, I would say, <laughs> a, a month ago or within a 30-day span. What, what was going on with the two of you guys? He, I bumped what? into him in, in – in, well, yeah. actually, it was out here, right, for the Devin Haney fight. Yeah. He's pretty big. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's pretty big, so he's going to feel all that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just, just like my last boy. He wouldn't get out the way of no punch. He felt everything. That weight don't be helping you. Look, the, um, about Savage, man, you stay in Vegas. We live here. You see who I work with. I sparred mostly every heavyweight out here. Where Have you, you sparred you his at? his manager as well, Chris nah, Lovejoy? I ain't, I ain't sparred with Chris, man. But we 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 know the game, man. <laughs> Yo, you know what I'm saying? And and no offense to Chris, man. You know what? Uh, cool dude, man. Taking his opportunities, and I respect that. But uh, you know, I I ain't with none of the none of the Jake Paul cap. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to be mentioned with the guys doing it. You know what I'm saying? Not not just the clout chasers or nothing like that. I'm trying to be, you know what I'm saying, amongst those guys that are really, really making some noise. Who who else do you currently have on your radar? Obviously 4-0, and I, with the knockouts you have been I mean, getting, you know. I, I don't want to cut you off, but Polite's still not on your radar? Like, that's still not a good name for you? Because you're only 4-0. If you could beat Polite right now, that's still a leap up, I think. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. Like, uh, I, I feel like, for sure, I, I could beat Michael Coffey. Um, you know, without without no problems, um, and that's no no disrespect. He got some things to him, but you know, one of his accomplishments they, they listed in the rematch or something was he was a um, regional Golden Glove winner. Like, bro, you got to make it to nationals. You got to make it. You know, you don't you, you don't just you got to have some background in sport, man. I mean, he was doing things, but you look at his fights. Uh, whenever before he fought Johnny, he beat a. Uh, Damani um, Rock. Damani Rock, then he beat uh that undefeated Olympian, right? Uh hey, um Rock Rock though, that w that wasn't the Damani that was. No, he was off for like eleven months, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look look at his neck, everything. He couldn't take a shot. Um then you have uh the one guy, uh uh Joey a Abel, blew his own freaking arm out, punching on Coffee. He would have lost that night if you asked me. Hmm. You know, but the guy blew his arm out. So he was coming off two mysterious wins. You ask me, you know what I'm saying? Two mysterious wins to go into that uh, Johnny Rice fight. You know, great, great story, man. They really wanted to keep that alive, you know what I'm saying? And he he did, you know, go that far undefeated. But, you know, sometimes there's just some capping going on. But, hey, you know, I don't really, like, necessarily um, have anybody per se to where I'm just like, oh, I want to fight that guy. But there is a guy in London, uh, David Adelaide, who I – Probably just don't like as a person, and I don't know. How how don't you like a dude in a whole nother country as a person? What, he's some internet shit? <laughs> hey, yeah, man, I'm just, okay. Like, like you know, come off the tough guy stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I seen him uh, struggling some fights, and uh, then he get out of the ring, you know what I'm saying? Not even, like, humble enough to admit that he still got to, you know what I'm saying, do this and do that. He, he making excuses. You know what I'm saying for these lackluster performances, and uh, and still trying to act like you know he wanted one of these hard dudes. So I don't know. It just it, it rubbed me the wrong way one time, mm. and it stuck with me. You know what I'm saying? So like uh, I see him in his fights, man. He doing more flinching than fighting. Mm. And uh, I just think it'd be a good fight. We got the same type body. What build. you think about? The, I was about to say you ain't got no same type body. You don't think he's too muscular or overly muscular or more muscular than you? A uh, David Adler? Yeah. Nah. He signed with Frank Warren, right? Yeah, that's the guy. Ain't hey, pretty cocky, bro. What yeah, he's pretty cocky, man. You know what I'm saying? But uh, he get laid down, man. Muscles ain't intimidate no knuckles, baby. No, I hear you, but I I, I feel like he's bigger than you because you said uh, similar body uh, types. I, I I don't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he you know, but he a little bit more gassed up. You know, just a little bit more gassed up. You know, I, <laughs> but I but no muscles don't win fights. Yeah, I, 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 ain't, I, I agree. I ain't no I ain't no shabby looking heavyweight myself. Let me get a screenshot, Kenyon. Uh, so this is David Adelaide, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, look at this guy on the fucking bike right here, bro. No way. Yeah, Are so your biceps that big? I mean, 
And I'm, I'm asking here. This is not sarcasm because I just thought he was always cocky. I've been following him since he was 0-0. Look at this shot, bro. Nah, man. This dude's fucking huge. Yeah, he gassed up. Look at him, man. He's gassed, straight gassed up. up huh? <laughs> Look, I got, a, I got a video of this fight, actually, man. Uh, of that fight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I, it's, it's on my phone somewhere, but you watch the first... And I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't want to give everything away. Uh oh, y'all got similar knockouts. Look away. at this. Let yeah, me get one more. That's the one. Look at it. Look, this the one. He got him on the ropes. They got man. him like so Jesus looking, Christ on the ropes. I'm Lord. looking like, yeah, that. Would, I think that would be interesting. You put the two and two together. You know what I'm saying? But I, I'm telling you, I'm doing this much more effectively than he is. Look. Man, I like that you're trying to get yourself a little UK rivalry early in. Was the fight ever offered to you, or is this just some back and forth between you and him, or have you even had a back and forth? We Does he know how you feel? Negative, negative. He, oh. he has no idea, you know what I'm saying? But I'm just, you know, I'm watching the internet, you know what I'm saying? I'm doing my due diligence, looking at the heavyweight division, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I don't have no, I'm not a, I'm not a beef guy, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't make this sport emotional at all, you know what I'm saying? Just part of the job, but... You know, I'm watching him and I'm listening to his interviews too, and I'm just like, this guy, this guy kind of scary. You know what I'm saying? He kind of capping. Mm. Uh, is there anybody on the top rank side now? Don't mean uh, FA or Jared Anderson, unless that's something that you want to do. I, I mean, I look at you as a four and no fighter, so I'm looking for guys in and around that level. You know, Anderson and even FA are slightly uh, ahead. Yeah, uh, George. Uh, Johnny's outside. Um, but yeah, anybody on that top rank stable? And I'm asking about that stable because I feel like it's more realistic. You've had two appearances there. You know, obviously they 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 like you, so they might match you with someone they have. Yeah, for sure. Um, and that's one thing too. Like, uh, so I came out of amateurs uh, around the same time as Jared. He was one year before me when he turned pro, but he didn't really get the ball moving until almost when COVID popped uh, on the pro scene. Uh, you know, I'm trying to catch up with these guys now, though, because like I am four and zero. You know what I'm saying? And like they they got farther than me. You know what I'm saying? So they knocking on different different doors. Right. Mm -hmm. Adelaide's knocking on a different door. He's got you know a lot more fights. Uh, but you know I'm trying to definitely get maybe like five more fights this year so that these conversations become more realistic. You know, I know there's guys in that top rank stable. You know, they just signed, uh, you know, Richard Torres, the Olympian, stuff like that. You know, they got Antonio, a guy, uh, you know, that also fought in the amateurs. So there's a lot of fights in top rank that I can make happen. Um, and and we're going we gonna to make something happen down the line. But, yeah, you, you got to knock off somebody um, in your own group that everybody is kind of talking about being the next guy. You know, that's how you get it done. Like, mm -hmm. you, ain't, you ain't really seen no fights like that. You've had – Joe Joyce, you know, beating Daniel Dubois, that was one of those fights where they was right there with each other. Like, they mm -hmm. was in the same class in a sense. You know, Joyce has a better pedigree, but they was in the same class. Then you had recently Frank beating F.A., who was pretty much in the same right. class of people. You got guys like, uh, what's his name, um, Herkovich. You know, he trying to get the Joseph Parker fights. And, and the re these fights ain't happening because on a clout level, you, just you ain't different. there. You ain't there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So they need a. He needs that Tony Yoka fight or something like that. So yeah, that that's off the table because Yoka. Yeah, he got the still the Bacoli yeah. paperwork. But uh, Kian, let me get another screen share here. What do you think about uh, Kingsley eBay common opponent with Jared Anderson? Been on top rank about two or three times on their television. Uh, he and he lost to Jared Anderson. Did you see this man fight on Top Rank? And do you think that's a good opponent? Do you think that you're in the position where if Top Rank wants you back, you can ask for this name? Yeah, when I when I did my interview uh, with you over Danny, when we was at uh, what was it City? City. You know what I'm saying? We didn't really talk about this, but you know, I wanted when he beat uh he beat my homeboy Patrick Malata, and that was surprising to me, you know what I'm saying? I don't think really he won, but you know, Pat could have did some things. Uh, but I was talking to my management then, like, yo, cause I was one I wanted my top rank shine. I wanted to be out, I said, yo, let's get let's get eBay. Then Jared going there and showing for what he is, because he bought he boxed uh, Guido and I don't know what Guido was doing. Visionella? Yeah. Guido just had an off night and and got a draw with him somehow. Um, and I'm like, yo, but when you come down to boxing, this American style boxing, 
we got a different swag about us in that ring. So like, you got to put some, you just got to remind these people that like there is levels to it, man. So yeah, an eBay fight would be something that I, I'd take. That'd be no problem too. But you know, he's already been decimated by Anderson. So there's always going to be that comparison factor, but that's cool. I mean, it gives people something to talk about, right? Because if, let's say you go in and you were to get a more spectacular knockout or finish, people are going to talk about it like, oh my goodness, Jeremiah Milton did it better than Jared Anderson. We was just saying that for the fight tonight with Keith Thurman and Mario Barrios. People are going to compare Thurman's performance with Javante's Thanks. performance. It's, sure. it's just natural, right? It gets the people talking. You know, social media these days, you know, you got people like Evan Korn and Carl Moretti. They on Twitter. They seeing what the people saying. So yeah. it, it wouldn't be a bad thing. It's not mm -hmm. a bad thing. Never. Never a bad thing, of course. You know what I'm saying? Even in my last fight, you know what I'm saying, we all had common opponents. And, you know, that guy got uh, blasted by F.A. So I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I got to make sure that I'm, you know, I'm putting him in his place. Uh, so, uh yeah, no, it's 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 the heavyweight division, you know what I'm saying? There ain't a lot of guys, a lot of these guys, you know, fight each other and stuff like that. So, so yeah, I mean, none of these fights ain't really off the table. And, I mean, you know, when you ain't got a lot of fights under your belt, you know what I'm saying, like, you can only bark so high. So, like, you know, I don't even – I don't waste my breath, you know what I'm saying? I just feel personal about the L.A. thing, but – I don't waste my breath, you know what I'm saying, shouting out guys. I just right. what they what they want to see, I'm gonna bring it, I'm gonna give it to them. Well, Jeremiah, I have Jonathan Rice in the green room. So I got four questions from the people that we want to just uh rapidly get off before we bring them in. I, I actually last minute, because I didn't know how friendly the relationship was, now that I hear it's you guys are tight. I wanted to have the fourth mic, but it just won't be able to happen That's cool. uh, That's cool. this time around. But definitely we would love to get both of you guys back on on sort of a round table. But we got one of your biggest fans. He's uh, He's been following you from the very beginning since the minute we started inter interviewing you. Israel Weber from Oklahoma says. Hey, my guy with the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to OK Dude doing big things. Ness, give Jeremiah my number one. Uh, I'm uh, excuse me, my number. He wants you to have his number. I nixed my IG. Thanks, y'all. So shout out to Izzy, man. Just showing some love, and uh, you know, definitely one of your fans. I'm gonna tap in with you. We got James in uh, San Antonio, James Valdez, who says, "What's the story behind the nickname Dreamland?" Oh yeah, Dreamland. You know, it, it's significant to my city. You know, what I'm saying I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Actually, you know, what I'm saying it's, one, it's my tattoo right here. I got the tattoo before I decided to go by that, um, but. You know, Dreamland was a theater on Black Wall Street, Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, that was burned down, you know, during that whole massacre that happened out there. You know, there's been some new research done, and it's been, you know, shown across, you know, the nation, you know, the story of Tulsa, Oklahoma. But Dreamland, to me, is reference to the time of, you know, rebirth and prosperity. Uh, so, like, you know, I don't focus on the pain from, you know, what happened. Uh, I focus on for what it was, you know what I'm saying, a place for people to go. You know, they watch their favorite movie at the theater, and so you had a good time. So, you know, when you come to see me, you know, you come watch the show, you know what I'm saying? So, like, uh, I'm going to put on the show. I'm going to send these dudes to Dreamland, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? And, uh, yo, it's a party when Dreams step into Tulsa, Oklahoma, especially, you know, it's going down. I like that. I'm going to send them to Dreamland. You know, uh, <laughs> isn't the barbecue joint – Ain't that the name of the barbecue joint down it in Alabama? It is in Alabama, yeah. Dreamland. Oh, word. Have yeah. You, oh, yeah. Oh, Never man, you got to eat at Dreamland, yes. man. That's yeah. one of the it's, best rib spots that they I've have ever like been a, to. They have like a few locations, I think, like yeah. maybe like okay. three locations, but it's called Dreamland yeah. Fire Ass Barbecue, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Good memory, <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah man. Shout out to shout Deontay out. Wilder, man. I got to experience that in the many camps he uh, allowed me to be part of. And that is one of the best rib spots I've been to. I got the best dad ever from Baltimore. Who says, who are your favorite fighters to watch? And if Wilder were to return, who would you want him to fight? Oh, yeah. My favorite fighters to watch, you know what? Uh, Canelo is that guy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I really just learned a lot anytime I'm watching him. So I was I was very blessed to meet him, you know what I'm saying, last year and see him work in person. Uh, you know, and I enjoy watching um, a lot of different guys for their charisma. I like watching Wilder. I think... Uh, you know, if if Wilder was to come back, I still like to see him make that Joshua fight happen. You know what I'm saying? That's a fight that's still on the table. You know, some unanswered questions there. Um, I think uh, you know, he wins that fight though. Uh, 
But you know, Wilder is still he got he got so many different options. You know what I'm saying? He for him to be compared and to be you know saying oh he just ain't this and ain't that. You know what I'm saying? Like he gave the world champ Tyson Fury a hell of a run, hell of a run. That was, those were those were uh, three fights that'll go down in history. You know what I'm saying? As one of the greatest trilogies that was. Um, and so yeah, he got he got a lot more that he can give if he chose to do that. Uh, we got one more from – two more. Steve in the U.K. says, hey, Jeremiah, thanks for coming on the show. Have you got any plans to capitalize further on that AJ link up and come over here to fight any of our heavyweights across the pond? Once again, thanks for coming on the show, Steve in the U.K. Oh, yeah. You know, shout out to the U.K., man. Uh, you know, uh, I really enjoyed my time when I was out there. Uh, you guys really love y'all's boxing. So yeah, you know, I wanna um I wanna get my name in there with some UK cats, uh, just because, you know, they go hard for the sport, man. They gonna show out and they gonna they gonna turn it up every time. And I don't know, I've always had a personal connection since I was a kid, just a love for, you know, the UK. I don't know what where that really came from, but but uh yeah, I definitely definitely you'll be seeing me over there at some point. Later. Yeah, let's get Eddie, get Jeremiah on one of his shows. He yeah, has all man. these heavyweights out there. I, I, I'm sure Sam Jones, who's not with Eddie anymore, but he, I'm sure he'll be calling you for. He's got two heavyweights: uh, Dakari Solomon and uh, Joe Joyce. Joe Joyce. Yeah, he got. It. Oh no, got and Johnny Fisher. Johnny Johnny Fisher. Is, yeah, yeah, and then um, the the Cody uh, Solomon and then um, uh, Joe Joyce. Yeah. And then Guido is also his Oh, guy. that's right. The thing is that Guido's been off the map after that bad top rank fight. Yeah, he had one return fight, and uh, I don't know where he really been out. Since yeah. that. Last one is from Cincinnati. Brandon, uh, who says, you and Big Shot Shaw are two of the heavyweight division's best-kept secrets. Who wins if you guys fight? Uh, I can't say Shaw. Come on, now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I just met but. Shaw, man. He was cool, man. You know what I'm saying? But, like... Uh, it is what it is, man. You know, there's just not enough names in the heavyweight division. You know, uh, before they replaced my last guy, they threw the fight to three guys. I think that would have been better than um, uh, than uh, Jason Bergman even. You know, they tried to give the shot to Greg Corbin, who, mm. you know, I shared the ring with. Uh, I was helping him get ready for the for the uh, Philip Hargovich fight back in 2017 mm -hmm. I remember or 18 that. or something yeah. like that. Uh, you know, and... Uh, so like they they throwing me out there with some names, you know. You'll be seeing me step up in class, and I'll probably be doing it rather quickly just because I want to. Um, you know, I got the skills and the heart to do it. That Corbin fight would have been great in Tulsa because he's from Dallas, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, actually, that you know, for them even to throw that out there, they kind of undershot that because for it to be a last minute fight, you know, what I'm saying he could probably he could probably generate, you know, what I'm saying because that's just yo. Four, four miles, four, four hours. I got to get you out of here, but I want to ask about Thomas McEchin. Were you offered that fight? I don't know who that is. Oh. Yeah. But am I? He, we just had him in here. Did he not say he was offered a Milton fight? I think he said that he was calling for the, for the Milton fight. I don't think he said it was okay. offered. He trains out of the city he, gym he, too, he's though. He's that city, yeah. Never heard of you. <laughs> <laughs> I love the pause. Listen, we're going to do a quick intermission so we get a photo op with you. I want to thank you, obviously, for coming in to the studio and giving us an opportunity to interview you. Please give out your social media. Let anybody know anything where they could get any merchandise, any websites, any, any, any locations where they can follow you on any social media. And once again, we truly appreciate your time getting up early this morning to come into the studio. Yeah, absolutely, guys. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you guys for having me. You know what I'm saying? You can tap in with me. Uh, follow me at Dreamland underscore Milton on Instagram or just Dreamland Milton on Twitter. Uh, and just keep up with the journey, man. Uh, shout out to everybody that's been a part of it along, you know, along the way. And, uh, yeah, we got more to do. So, uh, yeah, just stay tuned. The video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the Patreon dot com backslash the boxing voice we have tons of exclusive from border wars and title betting shows the list goes on and on and on but in addition to that if you guys have questions for fighters trainers and promoters this is where you can submit them we will run out get these questions answered and put it back on the show just for you guys appreciate it peace